Hi again. I would like to continue with the image that I used in the previous video, and I would like to show you some more AI backed, AI supported tools in Photoshop. The first one is uh, about uh, filling in uh, the missing portions of the canvas. If you have this mid journey picture, which is in the square format, but you want to make it like a you know, nine, uh, 16 by nine. Uh, there are a bunch of ways of doing it, right? So you can make this a layer and then you can enlarge your canvas, but I want to do an unusual way of, you know, like making uh, the canvas wider. So I'm going to crop, uh, inverse crop it. So for the, for the ratio, I pick 16 by nine. So I have my cropping region. I'm going to fit this into the screen. And instead of cropping it, I'm going to extend the corners and then I'm going to get this image. So now we see in this layer, these areas are empty. So what you can do is again, uh, this time I'm going to use uh, the magic wand tool to pick these blank areas by holding the shift key and go to, uh, I think it was on the edit. Yeah, here you go. We have fill or content that we have filled. This time I'm going to pick the fill directly. And in the drop down menu, you have content aware, and I'm going to hit OK. So, what's going to happen is it's going to read, take the full image as the resource, look at the content, and try to kind of like just stamp it, you know, uh, generate some pixels that go along with the image that I have there. Uh, and interestingly, what's going to happen is it's going to also like, you know, make the, uh, make the edges like disappear, right? So, it doesn't want to have a border as it fills in. Uh, and I would say this is quite successful and convincing, right? So you could almost like take this and it made a much better job on the right side than the left side with this, uh, the border. And you could just take this and make it a little, you know, more, a couple of more fixes and just use it in the, in this image in this 16 by nine format. The other, okay, I'm going to give it another attempt at this. Just pick that area in the zone, right click that. And uh, I'm going to use, instead of saying uh, content aware fill, which takes me to the, you know, the, the bigger menu, I'm going to say fill again. And I'm going to make sure I have the content aware in the drop down menu. And I say, okay. So let's see what it does here. Uh, I think it just kept it the same. No, it's still not. Okay. So this takes time uh, because my image is really big. I think I bumped it to like, 6,000 something. Let's check the image size now. Image size. Yeah, this is 12 by, you know, 12 K by 7 K. It's a really, really large image. And, you know, you see again, like it's slowly, it's disappearing. So I can again, pick a wider range this time and say, right click again, fill content aware, hit okay. I'm just trying to get rid of that line. So it's going to read again, the borders, you know, the, the edges of this rectangular area. And it's going to try to fill it in. Okay, done. Right. So this is this is magic. Super cool. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this image slightly smaller now, uh, and I I'm gonna go back down to let's say four thousand. I don't want it to go crazy. Actually, let's let's make it twenty four hundred for now. Okay. All right. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply some filters to this, which is under filter and neural filters okay so these are a bunch of new filters that you can use and uh, for the uh for the image that you are working with okay so let's make this window smaller if i can i'm going to zoom out a little bit it's not fitting it in for some reason maybe there's a glitch so i'm going to move it here all right again now we are in the neural filters menu which is right here under filter and neural filters i just hit that and i ended up here so once you come here what you're going to see is the list of uh again ai supported uh filters these are emerging and some of them are being updated on i don't know daily or weekly basis so each time you come in maybe you see slightly different uh thing happening here so don't freak about that freak out about that 
And a couple of things I really enjoyed using is the style transfer, which is a common tool uh, for any sort of ML image tool that we used in the past. So, uh, you know, style transfer is pretty much taking any visual style that are represented by little thumbnails on the right side here and applying it to the image that you have in hand. So here, you know, like uh, if we pl click this image, uh, which should be a, an, an, a craft from a Van Gogh painting, if I'm not wrong. It applies that to, uh, to your image here. Same thing, you know, just changing the image and clicking again, it should apply. Okay, so now you're going to realize that it's downloading it uh, because once you download these tools, some of the features come in built in already and some of them you need to you know, they are, they are like extensions, so you need to download them uh, to apply them. Let's go back to this one as it downloads. Okay, I get something. And then the nice thing is you can change the style opacity. So if you change it, it's going to be, you know, uh, this the filter applied on top of the original image. Actually, I really like this one. And then and then you can change uh, also the the strength of the style, right? So if I, if I exaggerate it, you know, you almost lose the original image because the style is getting so heavy and it's kind of like reading it in a very different way uh, and so on and so forth. So let's go somewhere in between again. Let's make the, let's make the filter more prominent here. And then of course you can play with the details, meaning, you know, you can kind of like make the details diminish or just keep them if you want to have them there. All right, great. And the nice thing is, you know, they have the background blur, saturation, brightness, and so on and so forth. And once you hit OK, uh, it applies the style transfer to this image. Just for you to see, uh, keep seeing the differences, I'm just going to keep the image the same without applying this filter on top of my image. So I'm going to escape, go back to this image that I have here, fit it on my screen go back to filter and uh, neural filters. It's coming again. And we just check the style transfer. The next one that I would like to look into is the depth blur. And again, you will need to probably download this and it's a beta and it's turned off. So you need to turn on it first. And it's, as you see, the uh, progress bar is already running. So it's applying some sort of like uh, uh, depth uh, filter. So what you can do is uh, you can set the focal distance here and the focal range, uh, but at the same time you can pick, you know, where uh, you want uh, the, the the blur to be applied to. So this is not really right because it's just taking a point and, you know, blurring the top portion of this tower, which is not a right way to do it. And then you can say focus subject. So it should be able to, you know, uh, identify exactly as you see in here. Uh, but again, you know, it's having this little problem in detecting this portion of the image being uh, a portion of the subject again, but it's fine, you know, and then you can change the blur strength now. So it's less blur, more blur, and still, you know, kind of picking up this as the subject as well, which is fine. And then the one nice thing I like is the haze. So this haze really works well with the, if you have a product image in, a, in an angle, uh, the haze will be applied to the, you know, uh, with, the, with the depth. So you lose details as the depth increases in the photograph. I really like that. All right, so this is very cool. And the last thing I wanna show is the color transfer, which is pretty much, you know, taking, uh, taking the color palette of these uh, presets and applying those to your image, right? So you can, you can get the original pixels or the RGB values uh, of your image, uh, and then they will be uh, remapped to the images that you see on the right side. I think one cool thing about this tool is that you can apply, uh, you can upload it, you know, custom image, and I'm going to you know, I have some New Balance, uh, let's say, images here that are already open. So I can pick them and uh, apply 
the the colors from these custom images to here i'd really like this one just reading you know whatever you see in this image and just applying to those all right one last thing that i would like to show is the harmony tool again which is in uh, you know ai filter uh in photoshop for that you need a, a, a layer which has uh, some sort of um, alpha background right so you can pretty much uh help the tool kind of like see through right through that so i have two layers here one is this uh, you know new balance hero shoe that i dropped in here which is a shoe that i like a lot and then i have my background image so what you need to do here is that make sure that you're picking the one with the alpha channel and uh, please uh, try to pay attention to the discrepancy of like colors and contrast and the between these two images right so there's not much harmony uh, in here in terms of colors right so i'm not talking about the composition here for sure and i'm and i'm hoping that uh and i am hoping that uh, it is pretty clear so let's go to uh, filter and neural filters again and again i you know i picked the the layer which is at on the top with the with the alpha channel and i'm gonna go into harmonization and just turn this on and i need to take pick a layer as the reference image and i'm going to pick my bottom layer layer zero as the reference so it's processing it now and you would suddenly realize that it was off levels off uh curves of color and so on and so forth and suddenly you know it reaches a uh, similar let's say um, uh, tonal tonal language that you see in the in the background so you can decrease the strength of that which is the original image and we can go full power 100 percent here which is matching you know uh, the, the the tonal harmony uh similar to the background image don't be uh you know don't get kind of like fooled with the with this image being dark because you can go back and you know adjust the color values to to fit in and also which is something a tool here right so you can increase the brightness and then decrease the saturation and then as you change this you're going to realize that it's still keeping you know it's still keeping that harmony that balance that you have in the image in the background same with applying these colors uh, or you know like shifting uh, shifting the color palette uh, from one to another one all right and once you say okay this will be applied and you would have the final image great all right i i hope you find these simple ai tools in photoshop helpful again as i said you know like i'm not going into any crazy technical details here maybe these videos are more for beginners or some you know intermediate users who are not aware of these tools but i think these are really really nice tools if you're using mid journey if you're trying to use uh some you know ai text to image tools uh, rapidly for concept development you can also bring them into photoshop and apply these tools which are again you know from the similar family uh, of tools that are uh you know using uh, ai support in the in the background uh with that uh if you if you find these videos please comment uh, let me know what you would like to see more and uh, again yeah subscribe to the channel and support me so i can produce uh, more of these these videos for you. Thanks a lot.